Hello, hello, and welcome. It's yet another episode of TwoDebate.net, and I'm Sebastian, and my co-host, as usual, this the same and the only one, the unique one, uh, Derek. How are you? I'm uh, surprised how well the connection now seemed to work between Frankfurt and Jakarta. You are far away today. Far away, but close to your heart. Don't worry. I love you too, Sebastian. You start. We started that uh, that debating podcast with "I love you too," and that's it's a constant <laughs> theme in our debate. So no no worries there. So as you said, I am in Jakarta, Indonesia today, and it turns out Indonesia is a recent democracy. It used to have a dictatorship until I think at the end of the nineties, if I'm not mistaken. So it's interesting to be here today. Why? Because our mo our motion is. Democracy is better than dictatorship. Yes, that's the motion. And the flip of the coin has decided. And I want to insist the flip of the coin, the flipping of the coin is completely random. It has decided <laughs> that you're the lucky one. Democracy. <laughs> and it was your flip of yeah, the well, coin, my flip I of might the coin. add. Yes, yeah, you, you are right. <laughs> so you will defend democracy and I will defend a dictatorship um, as one form of government against the other. And I will also start this debate. So am I ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Of course I'm ready. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. I want to start by debunking one myth. Dictatorship does not imply that it is a military one. It doesn't have to be even one person. In fact, what I want to emphasizes that a dictatorship by opposition to democracy in particular removes the power from the people. Yes, it is true. It is a top-down decision, which allows for a country to be ideally more efficient and more stable. It doesn't have to be totalitarian. It doesn't have to be fascist. It is just a form of government which imposes decisions. So I want to make it very clear that I'm not advocating fascism. So that's important. an important distinction to make. The second point I want to make in fact, just to uh, remember where the dictatorship comes from, initially in Rome, it was a temporary magistrate who had extraordinary powers for a limited period of time to deal with state crises. So it has nothing to do with what we, we see today with modern tyrants uh, being dictators. So there are different ways of applying this concept of a dictatorship. Thirdly, I'm sorry to say, and obviously the, that what I'm going to say does not apply to our listeners, but apart from our listeners, people are dumb. People are dumb. Look at the opinion polls. We had a debate about election polls, but they, they shift all the time. There's the latest emotional BS, the latest emotional thing in the news will change opinions very quickly. Why? Because people don't care about political programs. They don't read it. They're just, they just react emotionally. So how can you handle something, a country wants more on a, on a rational basis if people are completely emotional? Makes no sense. And in fact, people don't even go voting. Look at abstention, abstention rates. They don't, they don't go to election uh, to vote and cast their vote. So why give them democracy? People are just too dumb. Again, not our listeners, who will obviously choose my side for this debate. In any case, we don't even have true democracies. If you look at the US, it's not even the popular vote which is deciding who's the next president. It's uh, intermediate democracy. So we don't have a true democracy. It's just as corrupt and unequal as other forms of uh, governing countries. <laughs> Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Remember those words? You're French, right? So, what do you think have your French um, ancestors, what do you think have they been fighting for? What do you think has the American Revolution been about? Those revolutions have been about the one thing that you said is taken away by a, a dictatorship. The right to to influence decisions and the right to contribute to those decisions. There is one other thing that democracy brings that dictatorships moves away, the right to remove governments. You made the point that you said, we are not even living in a true democracy, but you, you're not mentioning what you understand as a true democracy. There is a spectrum that you can actually draw. In a democracy, the government can be removed either by revoting after a given period of time or by rules, like in the States, that after two terms you have to move out of the office, or by, like in Germany, for instance, 
by a special vote where you can kick out the head of state if they're not doing their job properly. So there is some power in the people that are being governed. And why is that important? Because it removes the need of a revolution and the need of a civil war if you really want to throw over the government. And that's the reason why democracy, and that's the main reason why democracy, is superior to a dictatorship. Because a dictatorship, if it's a wise man dictating, awesome. But not all of us are wise, and there's no way to really elect always the wise person. So you need a system that allows you to correct mistakes that you're making. Democracy is superior to dictatorship because people are better off in the end and they don't need violence to resolve the problems with the system. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. I'll start by answering your point about the ability to remove government. I don't see any incompatibility with removing a dictator, actually, or a collegial rule of dictators by another entity. The opposition of dictatorship to democracy is to give the right to the people to remove the power in place. But you could have another entity which is observing and analyzing and criticizing the action of that dictatorial, this top-down body at the top of the state. The, the only point I'm making, it doesn't have to be people who... You say you want to give a right to influence decisions, but they don't care. They don't care. In fact, you look at opinion polls. The younger generation these days, it's surprising to me, it is true, are more in favor of a dictatorship than the older generations. We're talking about Western Europe. It's a, it was in the polls a few, a few weeks ago. But then when I say we don't even have a true, true democracy, here's what's happening. There's very often not anymore any majority party um, in a given a country. Let's say, you know... Uh, most parties gain about 10%, 20%, at most maybe 30% of the vote. Now, only 50% or 60% of the population is voting. You do the math, that best case scenario, 30% of 60% people voting, that's 20% max of the population. And that party will be in power. So it's representing a minority, 20% of the, uh, the population, which has decided to vote for them. And then people are selfish. It becomes a popularity contest. You defend people because of the same religion, your party because of the same ethnic group or same financial interests. So in effect, it's not a true democracy because you're fighting, you're advocating in most cases. And again, I'm sorry to say when I use that expression, people are dumb. But this is what you see, even as in contest as silly as Eurovision, the singing contest in Europe, where you can see that people are just defending their country or neighboring countries or allies blindly. Even though it's a singing contest, no, you can see this in the votes by the, by the, the general public. It has nothing to do with singing. It has to do everything with, with geopolitical differences. I have more arguments to make. You say we, can, we don't have to resort to violence. By no means, dictatorship means violence. It just means being top-down and being very efficient. You just pass laws immediately. You don't have to debate them. You pass a law, and you hope, indeed, for the best. And if the dictator or the body which is governing the state as a, in a top-down way is hopefully indeed making wise decisions. You can have a controlling uh, uh, body uh, of uh, another controlling uh, body. I don't know, we can invent a new form of dictatorship. I want to give a, another example because uh, it's a French example. You, you, you cite uh, 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 the French uh, motto. Uh, de Gaulle, after the war, or even at the end of the war, between 1944 and 1946, was seen as a liberator for France, but in effect, he was a dictator. Right? He wanted to change the constitution when he came back to power in 1958. And thankfully, that constitution, the Fifth Republic that France is going through right now, is the one that is still going on. It has worked better than the shaky Fourth Republic uh, in France. So actually, good things can come from dictators. And de Gaulle was actually a dictator for a brief period of time, or acting as a dictator. And he was also, by the way, a general. So it was not incompatible to be an army man, an army officer, and try to impose a top-down thing. So dictatorship, bizarrely, does not seem as the most horrible thing. So even maybe in this current context, it's probably better than democracy. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear it. I'm not saying that dictatorships are always constantly in a state of violence. Although you have to admit, if you're a dictator and you impose rules and laws without asking anyone and everyone else has to ob obey, that's a form of violence in itself. And chances are that the dumb people, as you call them, are not universally happy with those rules. 
So if they happen to be disagreeing in disagreement in a dictatorship, no one cares if they disagree. That's the whole point of a dictatorship. And what what will that lead to? That will lead to unrest. That will lead to the question what those people can do. And that leads in the end to revolutions. You can see dem democracies as a form of civilized, non-violent revolutions. It's like we have a date in our calendars where we do have a, a revolution. Uh, it's just a revolution where no one gets shot. It's a revolution where we all behave. We basically go someplace and cast a vote or have the right to cast a vote. I'm not saying that our democracies are perfect. Clearly, there are not enough people going to vote. Clearly, there are not enough people feeling the need to be involved. That's all true. But you have the right to do that. And you can boil it down to uh, the question of human dignity. Should you have the right to choose your government? Should you have the right to throw over your government? And I think and firmly believe you should have. That's an important feature. That is the one main differentiator between those systems. A democratic system versus a dictatorship, which in the end is autocratic at least. Um, maybe not fascist, maybe not totalitarian, maybe not military-driven. All these things don't need to apply. And I agree, there are dictatorships on this planet that seem to work well But the other thing is, there are way more examples of dictatorships that don't work well, especially for the people being ruled. And there are plenty of examples where countries chose to throw over their dictatorship, started to adopt a democratic system, and were better off as a result. South Africa is a good example. Nigeria is another example. So there are plenty of examples where even, even when they are not perfect, even if they, when they still have unrest and problems, they were better off after... The, uh, after having a democracy in their countries. We will have our ups and downs. But the question is, is democracy better than dictatorship? And I think there's actually right now not much alternative to that if you start by thinking about human dignity and the right of people to contribute to decisions or influence decisions or at least have a valuable opinion about decisions that are being made on their behalf. <laughs> Final statements. Sebastian goes first. As people say on the stock market, past results do not guarantee future performance. So your examples may be valid for the recent history, but they don't presume of what will happen in the future. Now, when people elect a government or a, a ruling party for the next, let's say, five years, once they have elected the party, nothing really can, over, can overthrow that government. Right? They can't go and vote again. If they have voted for the next five years, the ruling party can basically do whatever they want. They don't because politicians are corrupt in most countries, even Western uh, countries. And people also go in the streets, even when they have, when not happy with a decision of a government. So they can demonstrate, and you know, they can still demonstrate in a dictatorship, in a new form of dictatorship. It just indeed means that their voice will not be heard. But today in a democracy, is their voice really heard? I don't think so. It doesn't have to lead to violence. And I think anyway, people don't really care about what's happening. You know, reforms that are being attempted, if, when they are, and people don't really care. They're emotional. They follow, you know, whatever political agenda or communicator is around. And I'll conclude with saying one thing, is that in Belgium, for a year and a half, there was no government. It didn't change anything. So democracy, well, not really needed. And there, the vote is mandatory, by the way. So might as well try a new form of government. Let's try with a top-down ruling body. Dirk. You had, what, one and a half years, no government. Still, there was a democracy in place because it's not just the five clowns that you see every day on the TV that make a government. There is a larger body of people and there is a system in place in democracies where people are having discourse, discussion, and decisions in a shared system. And yes, I agree. Most countries, there is no way to throw out the government uh, within the, the election period. Not so in Germany, I have to say. In Germany, actually, our parliament can go to a vote and throw out the, 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 the chancellor. But I suppose that's not true for every system on this planet. But on the other hand, if you know that things will go away in five years or you're up for re-election in five years. There are two things that come out of that. First, 
you're going to retry because otherwise you're not going to be reelected. That puts a cap on how much damage you do now. And second, the, the voters probably wait. They are not throwing uh, out the government by means of a revolution with weapons. They wait five years and go for re-election if it's really that bad. And that is uh, preserving freedom and peace. And that's why I believe democracy is a superior system. It's so frustrating not to be able to counter-argue. I hate this Oxford style of debating. I don't know who suggested it, but it's so tough <laughs> to, to shut my mouth because I never, ever shut my mouth. I always interrupt people. They hate me for it because I, then they, tell, they, they say I don't pay attention enough, I don't listen. It's not always the case, but it's so tough. It's so tough. I just want to react. I just want to say, okay. and it's done. It's done. We're done with today's debate again. You know what you have to do. Vote for me, because this is a top-down decision. You have to vote in favor of dictatorship on the website to debate.net. So of course, I'm joking. You vote for whomever you think has convinced you with this debate. You can also give us your feedback by email and on iTunes, your honest feedback. And we're available whenever you want to chat with us and give us suggestions or suggest additional arguments which we could have used during this debate. Thank you, Duck, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time for our next debate. Thank you very much. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. I'm in this position where, obviously, by default, I don't want to. I don't want to defend a dictatorship. Like, like by default, my, my gut reaction is, of course, to defend democracy. And then I have, then I think twice. And then I real, I came with my arguments, which, uh, with part part of them come from a bit of research, but most of them have come from, okay, what if I had to defend this this system? And and considering what I'm observing currently in France and Germany and in a lot of countries, and realizing that people don't care, or that actually no real reform is being passed because. The government is scared of not being re-elected, so they're very... Maybe Germany is a, is a slightly a case upon because maybe Germany, maybe some of the Scandinavian countries are more advanced in terms of really wanting to change things. But when I look at Italy, Spain, France, I can't really say there's a lot of change happening. Like Belgium, like no government, no law being modified, doesn't change anything. The country is still running. You say it's a democracy, fair enough. But the, the, the whole point of a democracy is to have you know, um, the power in place which is elected and chosen by the people, the rest is just administration. Administration will run the same way whether you have a dictator or a, or a president or a prime minister or none. For what it's worth, I tend to, to partially agree with you. So if I look at Singapore, for instance, Singapore clearly is not a poster child for a democratic system. Yet it runs fairly well, and yet they found ways to include people, and they found ways to kind of rotate. And uh, um, also, the, the example I made right in the beginning, I'm having a family. If we would make our decisions in a democratic manner, that would be, well, <laughs> interesting, to say the least. Um, so we are not... We, we, um, Often uh, it's it's pretty clear who calls the shots, and it's pretty clear who who at some point after some discussion after being heard. But in the end, it was then me or my wife who called the shot, and uh, that's not democratic either. So um, I I can see um, that that uh, um, dictatorships uh, can work, and they can work for the better of the people. Sure. And there are bad democracies out there, and there are all those flaws that you mentioned. The only thing is, there is no system I can think of that has a failover built in. And there is no system I can think of that protects people from seriously, uh, from governments that seriously go haywire, other than democracy. And that's really my point. Look at, look at the states. Uh, thank God Trump is not really ill meaning he's just incompetent yet he will do a lot of damage in the two terms he might have in the end but it's not more than two terms thank god and that's true in most democracies that you have like a you have like a 
a, a given stop point in most democracies, um, um, on, um, and, and that is that is something that I believe makes the world a safer and less violent place. And, and that, that is actually the main argument I have. And in a healthy, living uh, democracy, I would put on top of that that I prefer being able to participate, being able to influence decision, being, being a part of a system that has to respect my voice. Anyway, stay safe. A lot of idiots on this planet, as you as you know. Oh, except our listeners. Uh, you will kn- you will you will know that I I tried to pat our listeners on the back. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. That's just a, so that's just, uh, yeah, our listeners clearly are brilliant. Listen, that's just a way for me to get the votes. That's a tactic. You, you realize that your tactic can end up in the outtakes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you think about this every time you're you're trying to push me, you're trying to push me in saying something absolutely horrible. And you're like, yes, I have him. I have him. It's recorded. <laughs> you're convinced. I can see you're convinced. Yeah, I'm totally convinced. <laughs>